Good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Now, I've completely lost track of what part you know I'm on. Uh, I've got so many videos that are in that uh, that I've got on the on the phone or on the SD card, and, and I've lost track of what section. Well, hopefully all my dimensions are uh, are correct. I've double checked everything before I started sticking them. But you can see the rear shackle, front shackle, and the center bogey on uh, the passenger side and also on the driver side, uh, completely welded in and intact. Uh, three passes on each one of those also. You got a root pass. And you got a filler passed and you've got a, a cap on top, you know, to kind of pretty everything up and tie it all together. But everything is uh, true and plumb, nice and square. And uh, by golly, we're getting about ready for the hydraulic cylinder mount, which is going approximately where this uh, 4x6 is under here. That's going to be the 6x6 tubing uh, that I've got, still got to doll up and um, make a boss for the hydraulic cylinder to fit onto. Everybody likes to see a pretty bead every now and then. I mean, you know, it's it's not professional, but it's it's good enough. Uh, that's a pretty good cap on that pass. Here's another vertical on the other uh, the other side of the the rear angle arm. This is the pivot here, inch and a half uh, inch and a half pivot pin goes in there for the bed to to dump on. And of course, here inside uh, inside here on my cross member. And there's another vertical that's uh, that's taller. Now, if we're real lucky, the spring perches, the factory welded spring perches that are on the axles will match up to the dimensions of uh, of the front shackle and, uh, and the center bogies, uh, well, of the shackles and bogies. Uh, but anyway, we're progressing a little bit, you know. Yesterday I got uh, the old plasma cutter out because there was something we had to, uh, we had to make out of three quarter inch steel. But I, I didn't even think of, the, of getting the pla uh, putting the plasma on video until I was done. I told my son, I said, Dad, I completely forgot about it. But it doesn't matter because there's going to be a lot of plasma cutting coming up very shortly, uh, you know, when we get ready to make an gusset and things like that. We'll be using the plasma and probably the MIG on that instead of stick. Here, I'll, take a, I'll show you what I had to make real quick out of three-quarter inch steel. Had some scrap three-quarter inch steel around. Uh, I think my brother brought home from the trash hopper on, on his job site before he retired. At any rate, whenever that, uh, when that frame broke, uh, and this bottom portion, this here is the bottom portion of the 6x6 cross member, the hydraulic cylinder uh, goes right onto here. The bosses of the cylinder go right over the top of this. Um, and when it ground down into the concrete, of course, you know, we probably went, you know, about half a mile, whatever, to get off of the road uh, because he was it's broken. It had ground completely down across here and about half the hole off, but we didn't know that until uh, we got all the way home, and that's when the cylinder popped out of that half of hole, jammed in the ground, and then uh, did the damage to the front axle. So we had to replace that with, uh, with new three-quarter inch steel. So we went ahead and cut that with the plasma, and I still have to make one final pass on this. This is just the root weld and, the, and the, the filler weld, so I still got one final pass. And then I've got to trim this. I kind of miscalculated a little bit and uh, run off a little bit. Actually, I freehanded this tail end. I used a straight edge over here and a straight edge on the 90 and a straight edge here with the plasma torch, but uh, I freehanded the circle and I kind of missed my mark. So I've got to, uh, to trim that. Today, so uh, we got the opportunity to make a little bit of progress. So uh, we'll give a kind of little bit of a walk around and let you see. There's a six by six uh, welded in place. That's the one that has the boss down there welded on it, the one we had to make at three quarter inch, where the hydraulic cylinder will actually attach to push the bed upwards. Of course, that's in now. And here's our very first cross member here. You can see all the shackles. Here's the uh, the bogey in the middle, and of course the rear uh, the rear shackle and the front shackle on both sides, and so we're actually quite happy with the uh, with the progress. So it's getting really really close to attaching onto the front. Uh, we still have to do just a couple of more minor things, and then we're going to be leveling everything up and setting it right in there and butt weld it right into that frame. And I think I told you, but we're going to strap underneath from the front of that vertical drop or the vertical riser I guess on the on the uh, gooseneck we're going to strap underneath that all the way back up underneath this here 
and we're going to actually drop down under the six inch with two inch strap and then we're going to come all the way back up here right in front of their axle and that's going to be like a, a, a truss that'll become a, a, a trust member for lack of a better term I don't know what you would call it but that's what the plan is all in all we're uh, we're quite happy with all the progress you can see right here we've got the the, the gooseneck still supported we've got a supporter with with two chain falls you know for making it easy to level so we'll be rolling that back into place and tacking it to the front of this before too long. Maybe not today. We got too much other stuff. Bear in mind, I'm not a welder, uh, not a trained welder by trade or anything like that. I and I don't play one on television. That there's kind of gnarly looking, but uh, I don't think it's going to break. You know, so uh, it, you know, we just kind of botch things together as as good as what we can, you know, and, and run with it. But uh, I think you know most of them's going to hold. Uh, if it don't, well, we just do something different. But like I said, I think I showed you before, there's a, there's a vertical on the back end right there where the bed's going to pivot. Uh, and also right up there you can see the, the insides. They don't look too awful bad, but like I say, it probably wouldn't pass muster. But there's probably a little porosity in there. Uh, you know, you can't hardly, can't hardly help it without all those hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of professional training. You just can't make perfect wells, you know. Uh, but these, like I say, they're, they're tolerable and they'll work for now. If not, we'll do something different. We're going to be using a Hypertherm Pyramax 65, uh, which has on mild steel a capacity of cutting. You can plunge cut just a little bit deeper than that, but you can actually cut one inch material in mild steel. Of course, that's at the 65 amp setting. I've got it set for about 40 amps because we're going to start cutting the quarter inch gussets for the, uh, for the gooseneck. I don't know what number it is, I've lost, pretty much lost track. But anyway, whatever part it is, this is the part to where we're just about ready to start sticking the subframe back to the, uh, to the gooseneck. So, I don't know, it might be part eight. I'm just guessing, so whatever the title says. But at any rate, I don't know if you can tell, I get a fancy little spot here on my shirt. You know, there's a book out there, 1001 Uses for Duct Tape. Uh, you know, in that whole book, I read it from cover to cover, and I used about 900 of them. But uh, one thing that's not listed, is a patch and hole in a t-shirt, you know, from uh, getting your angle grinder wrapped up in your shirt and chewing your belly skin up a little bit. But uh, at any rate, <laughs> that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good uh, use right there. I actually got some on the inside of the shirt too, holding my guts in. But, you know, it's not that bad. Now, I kind of feel the need to apologize for kind of stumbling all over myself trying to decide what, uh, what portion or what part of the video I was on. Uh, turned out this would be part six. <laughs> You know, I get so strung out, get so busy doing things, and I don't always have just one one project going on. Uh, you know, I might have five or six projects at the same time going on, and so uh, I don't ever really know what part of that's. It's coming together quite nicely, as you can tell, and I, I really apologize if there's some redundancy. I have a tendency to repeat myself. In other words, I say things more than once, uh, <laughs> and that was a joke. But at any rate, um, you know, I am trying, you know, pretty good, pretty hard to get this project done. I know, I know. It's not going to get done before cold weather, you know, before winter. Um, and, you know, but we want to get to a certain point, you know what I mean? But uh, actually right now we're, we're much farther than what this episode shows. And I'm in limbo right now waiting on the, the delivery of my front axle. If the weather's nice enough whenever I get my axle, we'll go ahead and continue on. If not, we'll wait for some nicer days to finish it up. But at any rate, I do apologize for uh, not being quite so precise and, uh, and succinct in the, the, the delivery of what it is that I'm talking about. But hey, you know, what can I say, man? It is what it is, you know. Uh, and this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.